Well, we're going to start off with that little bit of that idea of myself as ruler of the universe. You can see where that fits in with everything we're, we're teaching and learning because if I'm going to open up completely, open up my heart and open up my mind to God and recognize my complete invulnerability, which would be as God created me. God doesn't create a vulnerable uh, creation. The creation must be as invulnerable as God. Like creates like, you know. Just like in this world we get apple from apple tree and, you know, pears from pear trees. You get spirit from spirit and spirit is invulnerable and spirit creates that which is invulnerable. So, in the end, I have to begin to accept my own invulnerability. Um, there's a line in The Course of Miracles where Jesus says, Make your invulnerability manifest. Well, doesn't that sound like it's really coming from Christ, <coughs> the Spirit? Make your invulnerability manifest. Teach everyone by your attitude that you cannot be hurt. And therefore you are teaching your strength and their strength. You are, you are just strengthening an awareness that Spirit is invulnerable and that I am Spirit indeed. So, one of the things we're going to look at is, how does that relate to everyday life? Because the song we just heard said, even in this world, it is impossible that anything come to me unbidden by myself. It's really talking about my consciousness, my mind. Like, everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. The mystery comes in is, is what if I have unconscious beliefs, and I'm asking for things that I'm not even aware that I'm asking for. Like, who would ask for sickness, really? You know, that doesn't make a lot of sense. If, unless you have an unconscious belief in sickness, and you want to call forth witnesses to the unconscious belief. So, for those that are familiar with Carl Jung, or psychology, psychotherapy, a lot of times we talk about the unconscious mind, and we talk about decisions which seem to be on the surface of consciousness, but all they are are reflections of deeper beliefs. So it seems like, you know, our, our theme is uh, God's will for me is perfect happiness, but if I still think I have a human will apart from God, and I can make decisions that are powerful, that are decisions of this world, then that still is is really being unaware of, of my true will, which is just for pure happiness. You might say, when you take your mind and you get all locked up and arrested in minutia and images and making decisions about images, then no wonder there's a sense of, of wandering, of meaninglessness. It's like you're trying to make decisions where decisions really don't have a, an impact, you know, decisions of the world. There's a line in A Course in Miracles where Jesus says, A decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. Isn't that a fascinating definition of a decision? It's a conclusion based on everything that you believe. And therefore, if you have unconscious beliefs that are just these assumptions that you're operating out of, that it's just past conditioning, that until you get in touch with that unconscious conditioning, then it's more like your life on the surface. The human life is more like a robot that's just acting out a pre-programmed uh, belief system. It's like what we call life in this world is really just like a motion picture of beliefs. And we can say more accurately a motion picture of unconscious beliefs. So the adventure begins when you start to say, I'm going to go into my mind and get in touch with the unconscious beliefs that are controlling me. And I do not wish to be controlled anymore by that which I've pushed out of awareness. I want to be fully aware, fully conscious of every decision I'm making. I want to make every decision with God, with the Holy Spirit in alignment with my source, instead of trying to make decisions against my source. No wonder there's guilt, 
with trying to make decisions against your source. If your source is love, and you're trying to make decisions against the source, then that's where the fear, the anger, the pain, the guilt come in.